Welcome to our fourth presentation. It's going to be about stiffness and swelling. So I know this will be a popular topic. So we're almost done with our little presentation series. We have one more next week about how to pick a surgeon. So please go watch that one when it comes out. So here's kind of our outline for this presentation. We'll go over introduction. Um, I'll talk about my courses and then we'll talk about common causes of stiffness and swelling and then what to do at the very end. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Dr. Samantha Smith. I am a physical therapist and I've created a website called succeedcourses.com where I provide information, evidence-based information, and just information based on my experience um, treating people with knee replacement. So I am the instructor of all the courses on succeedcourses.com. So I have um, also a Facebook group. If you are not in the Facebook group, I really, really recommend that you join it. It is so helpful for people going through this surgery. You do need a support group when you're going through the surgery. So I have four courses available. The prehab one up here, um, this is going to be an exercise um, kind of educational course about what to do prior to surgery to improve your outcomes after surgery. This is probably going to be the most important course that I have. You need to be doing some sort of exercises or stretches prior to surgery. And then my pre-surgery course is everything you need to know about surgery including like information, what to ask your surgeon, et cetera. And then it also includes all the prehab exercises. Then if you've already had your surgery, I have a post-surgery course about how to go through your rehab process, um, explaining symptoms and stiffness and swelling. And I have all the exercises and stretches in this course as well. And then the bundled course is all three of these courses in one and you get the uh, 55 pages of exercises to print. Each one of these courses does have exercise handouts that look like this, but um, of course the bundled course has the 55 pages. So first we're gonna go over pre-surgery factors. What causes people to have stiffness and swelling? So there are some pre-surgery factors. If you have any of these, you are more likely to have more stiffness and swelling after your surgery. So first and foremost, if you have poor range of motion prior to surgery, you probably will have poor range of motion after surgery and that's gonna result in stiffness. So best thing to do is to stretch prior to surgery to improve your um, outcomes after surgery. So this is what I go over in my prehab course, how to stretch and what to do and how to strengthen your muscles. So if you don't know what to do or you have a lot of knee pain, my prehab course is focused on people who have knee pain, hence um, it is a prehab course for people going through knee replacements. So um, second, second thing is medical history. So there is just some research out there about you know, what types of people have stiffness after surgery. And the medical history shows females are more likely, people with high BMIs are more likely, people who are diabetic are more likely to have a lot of stiffness and swelling after surgery. Bad surgery, so I didn't kind of know what term to put here, but it's more like bad surgical technique. Um, if you don't have a surgeon who is experienced you will have more stiffness and swelling after surgery. If you're sedentary, this kind of goes in with medical history. If you're sedentary prior to surgery, and I know a lot of people are sedentary prior to the surgery because you have a lot of knee pain. So um, if you don't know what to do exercise-wise, again, take my prehab course. This will really, really help you um, kind of you know, get rid of those stiffness and swelling symptoms after surgery. And then here we go again, no prehab. Um, if you didn't do any prehab prior to surgery, you're more likely to have more stiffness and swelling. So now there are some post-surgery factors. So once you have your surgery, there are some factors that come into play of people who have more stiffness and swelling. So poor PT, not having a PT that knows what they're doing or maybe having a PT that's too aggressive or doesn't do enough, things like that really, really do cause uh, more stiffness and swelling after surgery. If you're just not motivated to do the therapy, if you go to your therapy appointments twice a week and then they ask you, hey, you gotta do these exercises and stretches twice a day and you don't do them, you're most likely going to have um, you know, poor outcomes after surgery. 
not having any pain control. So people who wean themselves off of the pain medication too quickly, or you know, if you're going to therapy and they're being really aggressive and your pain just is not ever under control, you're going to have more stiffness and swelling. If you're sedentary, again, that kind of goes in with no motivation. If you're just sitting after the surgery, we do not want you to be sitting after surgery. So this definitely will cause more stiffness and swelling. And then there's a few unlucky people that just are genetically predisposed to forming more scar tissue after surgery. And we'll go over that here in a little bit. So what causes stiffness? There is a variety of reasons. There isn't just one thing that causes stiffness. So the first things that I think about are first the swelling. If you're going to have swelling after the surgery, you're gonna have swelling for three to six months. Most people is closer to six months that you're having swelling. And it's, you know, it slowly goes away as you heal, but it it's a big factor in why you feel so stiff and you feel like your knee is a balloon that's about to pop, it's because of the swelling. And then also the stitching. So they do do an internal stitch. So we all know about that, um, that cut right on the top, right on top of the knee. So they go through the skin and they make that incision over the top. But then once they get under the skin, they do this incision right here, right here. This is called the medial peripatellar incision. So you cut around the kneecap and up into the quad muscle. So then they're going to sew this up right here and it's going to cause a lot of tightness in this muscle. So this is going to, you know, give you that sensation of stiffness. Another thing is there is a lot of changes that happen to the tissues in the knee. So, you know, we're going through the surgery and you've had, you know, a knee that's had arthritis for, you know, five, 10 years. And then all of a sudden we're giving you a new knee. We're putting a lot of tension on the muscles around the knee. The brain to muscle connection is one of the most interesting ones. It, your, your brain and your muscles just aren't aren't focusing right uh, you know right after surgery they don't they don't communicate well right after the surgery so we it takes a long time for the nervous system to kind of get back into I guess the flow of things after the surgery and so you're going to have a lot of stiffness you're going to have a lot of muscle guarding pain also causes a lot of stiffness it won't Pain will not let you bend your knee, for instance. You'll have positions that are really uncomfortable. Your stretches will be painful. So pain obviously is a cause of stiffness. And then this is kind of the surgical technique that I was talking about. If you're not having, if you don't have a surgeon that is experienced um, and they put an incorrect implant in, so there's different sizes to all the knee replacements. If you get a surgeon who puts in the wrong size for whatever reason, um, it's going to definitely cause a lot of stiffness. You're going to feel like the knee is too big in there and there's you're just going to have a lot of symptoms if the knee implant doesn't fit right. And then like I was talking about previously, there are quite a, you know, three to six percent of people are going to have um, excessive scar tissue. And then I highlighted this one down here, poor surgical technique is the most common cause of long-term stiffness. So you're going to have short-term stiffness, which is going to be the swelling, you know, the changes to the tissues, this pain, muscle guarding, that's all short-term stiffness sensations. But if you are having stiffness for years after your surgery, it could possibly be from this. This is the most common reason why you're going to have stiffness after surgery. So here's talking about scar tissue. So three to six percent of patients have too much scar tissue. They're just unlucky genetic wise. Um, you know, this there's nothing they can do about this. They did all the stretches. They listened to their surgeon, their therapist. They had aggressive physical therapy, but they're just really unlucky and they uh, formed really, really thick scar tissue. Um, but then there's some people who just didn't stretch enough. Um, you know, they didn't do the exercises like we were talking about previously. They just didn't have the motivation to stretch. So, you know, there are some people who that's why scar tissue formed. Um, there are, you know, other cases where it's just bad luck. For instance, maybe you fell and that caused a lot of pain 
pain and then you couldn't stretch your knee because your knee was just so swollen and painful. So just lots of different instances. This is a picture. This isn't necessarily the knee joint or anything. I was just trying to find a picture that kind of shows you what scar tissue builds up to. So the scar tissue takes about six weeks to form and we want you to bend the knee so your scar tissue doesn't end up like this. So you can bend through scar tissue that looks like this and actually break it up. These are more called like adhesions. They're like kind of little strands of, I don't know, maybe you'd say strands of hair. And then they form into strands of a lot of hair. So you have this is going to be really thick and you won't be able to bend through really, really thick scar tissue. So you want to break through all the adhesions within the first six weeks by slowly increasing the intensity of all your stretches. So again, talking about knee changes, like we did previously, you're going from this arthritic knee over here to this new knee. So your new knee is going to be entirely different size. You can just kind of see the differences here. It's bigger this way, not necessarily bigger this way, but there just is a, a lot of changes that are happening. You know, you probably had a crooked knee and now they're going to give you a straight knee after surgery. That's going to cause a lot of tension on all the tissues, which causes that stiffness uh, sensation. And also that muscle to brain um, connection just isn't right um, after you have the surgery, especially because of those knee changes. So how to prevent stiffness. So first, you'll want to have a good surgeon and a good PT. This is me over here, and this is some random guy <laughs> that I found a picture of. So you want to have two good people that are helping you through this. You know, you want a good surgeon, good PT. That is going to be the best thing for you is to find two people who are going, these two important people who are going to work with you through this surgery. And then while you're going through the rehab process, best things that this is what I do for my patients is definitely icing and elevating. This is the ice machine um, by a company called Polar Active Ice. Um, you can use a code to order this if you don't have one. This is going to, you know, give you really, really cold ice compared to an ice pack. My code is Dr. Sam 10. I will post it below this video, but you can go onto their website and order this um, ice machine and, and get 10% off with um, my code Dr. Sam 10. So I have my patients use the ice machine. We are elevating to eliminate the swelling, which is causing stiffness. And then the bike actually really helps get rid of that stiffness sensation that's been, that's caused by the uh, swelling. So biking is really helpful as well. And I'll link that bike down below this video too. So some stretches that you can do, you need to be stretching your knee throughout rehab. These are pretty in this one and this one are pretty intense stretches. So anything you can do to break up that scar tissue, make sure you're doing your stretches as your therapist is telling you or your surgeon. And um, you just want to be bending the knee a little bit further every day. And then there are some people who do have issues with straightening the knee and you can feel a lot of stiffness because of that and scar tissue can build and it won't allow you to stretch your knee um, you know, completely straight. So this little device right here is very helpful. This is called the ideal stretch and you, this is a picture of me. Um, I have the ideal stretch on my knee and all you do is you pull this little handle towards you and it, and it straightens your knee. It brings this part of your leg up this way and it causes your knee to straighten out. Um, it's a really intense stretch. I know some people really have trouble straightening their knee. So I always recommend this device and I'll link it below this video as well for you guys to to look at it's on Amazon but then you know you have your basic stretches this is my favorite type of stretch you just prop your heel up on a chair in front of you and you stretch like this um, you know I'm, I have my patients slowly progress with the stretches you know start out with you know 30 seconds and then go to a minute minute and a half and just kind of get longer and longer until you can hold it for you know even up to five to ten minutes to help with the stiffness 
What you can do for your last resort, if you cannot get rid of the stiffness, your knee doesn't bend, it doesn't straighten, they have a procedure called an MUA. I do have a video on my YouTube about an MUA procedure, but in short, they put you to sleep and they bend your knee. They don't cut anything, but they need to put you under anesthesia so they can bend your knee because obviously if you were awake, you wouldn't you wouldn't let them bend your knee, you would be in a lot of pain. So this guy is asleep right here and here's the surgeon. He's slowly bending the knee and look how much range of motion he got. So that's the goal. They're breaking up scar tissue when they do this type of procedure. So it's, it's a really successful procedure, but you know, obviously it's not something you wanna go through. So again, check out my courses if you haven't. I have all the information you can think of on my courses if you need help getting through your rehab process. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you again next week on our next video uh, presentation.